Today, you will learn how to make a wind turbine that generates stable power continuously without using any batteries or constant wind and lasting almost forever. Most wind turbines are useless without constant wind. But what if there was a way to generate electricity even on completely windless days? You are about to discover how to build a system that replaces conventional energy methods. You will use salvaged parts from trash. Everything comes from recycling centers and junkyards. You will spend nearly zero dollars. And at the end, you will have a power generation system that works for decades without degradation. Let me show you exactly how. Normal wind turbines produce power only when wind speeds are sufficient. The wind is unpredictable. Lithium batteries solve this problem by storing energy. But lithium batteries cost $500 to $800 per kilowatt hour. They degrade after 500 to 2000 charging cycles. After 5 years, they lose 30 to 40% capacity permanently. After 10 years, they are essentially dead. But what if there was a storage method that cost almost nothing, never degrades, lasted 50 years without any capacity loss and built entirely from trash? This is what you are going to build today. But first, you need to understand the basic mechanics to build the wind turbine system step by step. Your vertical wind turbine spins no matter which direction the wind blows. This vertical rotation travels down a long shaft to the ground. At the base, it connects to gearboxes that multiply torque dramatically. These high torque, slow speed rotation is used for one purpose, to lift a very heavy weight. The kinetic energy from the wind is converted into gravitational potential energy. When wind stops and you need power, the system switches modes. The stored energy, that heavy weight, is allowed to fall. Its fall drives a separate generator, converting that potential energy back into steady electricity for hours. Let me show you exactly how to build this step by step. Step 1. Get the turbine blades. Find a large diameter PVC pipe from a construction site or plumbing supplier. 10 to 12 inches in diameter is perfect. Step 2. Cut the PVC blades. You need to cut this pipe lengthwise into three equal curved sections. Mark the pipe into thirds then carefully cut along the lines using a jigsaw or handsaw. You now have three identical curved scoops that will catch the wind. Step 3. Create the support hubs. Find two circular hubs. You can cut these from thick plywood or salvage metal flanges or large gears. These hubs will hold your blades at the top and bottom. Step 4. Get the vertical main shaft. Find a long, strong steel rod or pipe. This needs to be very straight. A car axle works perfectly. It must be tall enough for your turbine and to reach your ground level gearbox. Step 5. Get bearings. This is the most important part. You need at least two bearings. One pillow block bearing bearing to hold the shaft steady at the top and one thrust bearing for the bottom. The thrust bearing supports the entire weight of the spinning turbine. Salvage these from old car transmissions or heavy machinery. Step 6. Assemble the rotor. Use strong metal brackets and bolts. You now have a complete vertical axis wind turbine rotor. All the heavy machinery is at the base. This makes the tower stable and easy to maintain. You will build three systems that all connect to one main shaft, the lift train, the generate train and the brake. Step 7. Get the main shaft, pulley and brake. Find a strong solid steel rod. This will be your main pulley shaft. Find a large pulley to act as your winding drum. Mount this drum securely to the center of the shaft. Now find a bicycle disc brake set, the caliper and the rotor. Mount the disc rotor onto the main pulley shaft and fix the caliper to your base frame so it can grip the rotor. This brake is your holding system. When engaged, the weight cannot fall. Step 8. Build the lift train. This train connects your turbine to the main shaft. First, get your right angle warm gearbox from an old electric chain hoist. Connect your turbine's vertical shaft to its input. Second, get your torque gearboxes. A washing machine gearbox 50 to 1 and a printer gearbox 4 to 1 are perfect. Couple them together for a 200 to 1 ratio. Third, get clutch 1 lifting. An electromagnetic clutch from a car AC compressor is perfect. Now, assemble the lift train. Right angle output connects to clutch 1. Clutch 1 output connects to the torque gearbox input. The final slow high torque output connects to one end of your main pulley shaft. Get a 250 to 500 watts 
three-phase brushless motor from an electric bike. It has permanent magnets inside, so when you turn the shaft, it will become a generator and produce electricity. Get two pulleys and a belt, add one pulley to the shaft of this generator and the other pulley between the clutch and the gearbox. Next, mount the generator on the same wooden base and couple the pulleys with a belt. After that, mount everything at the top most part of your house. Make sure that there is enough space for weight to safely hang or travel down. Finally, wound the steel wire on the drum pulley with an extend metal arm that has an additional pulley connected at the end from which the steel rope falls and holds the heavy weight in place on the ground. This heavy weight can be a discarded cemented structure. Its weight depends on the power of the wind turbine which ultimately has to pick it up. Make sure that the weight gets picked up even at the lowest possible wind speed. To get the weight picked up, you will have to power the electromagnetic clutch. Not to worry because it draws less than 5 watts of power and even a mobile charger can turn it on. Now as soon as you turn on the electromagnet, the entire system connects mechanically. So when the wind blows, it turns the vertical wind turbine which then gradually picks up the weight that was initially placed on the ground and tied to the steel rope connecting the drum pulley. This weight keeps rising and when the wind stops, then this weight does not fall down because remember that we connected a right angle worm gearbox. So that worm gear is going to prevent any reverse movement. Finally, when the weight reaches the top high position, then you can simply apply the bicycle brakes to prevent the weight from falling down. Finally, when you need electricity, you're simply going to disable the brakes and the weight is going to start falling down, which thereby rotates the generator shaft, thus producing electricity. You can test this system by connecting a 12 volts bulb to any of the two wires from the generator output. The bulb will glow continuously until the weight reaches back to the ground, thus stopping the generator rotation. After success, you can simply get a three-phase rectifier, which will be connected to the output wires of the brushless generator. The DC voltage that you get from the rectifier output can now be tested with a multimeter. And then accordingly, you can get a buck boost module that is going to absorb unstable output from the generator and give out a stable output which can then be connected safely to your 12 volts to 220 volts inverter. This inverter is provides you with 220 volts AC which can be utilized in charging cell phones and running your lights, fans, etc. Loads will depend on the power generated by the generator which can easily be figured out in the first charge discharge cycle of this gravity battery. Lithium costs $500 to $800 per kilowatt hour. A $5,000 battery system stores 6 kilowatt hours, powering an average home for 3 hours only. 5 days without wind and you lose everything. Gravity systems cost $100 to $200 per kilowatt hour. Same $5,000 buys 20 5 kilowatt hours of storage. That is four times more energy storage for the same price. The weight never degrades, never. You can charge and discharge it 10,000 times and it still works perfectly. Try that with lithium batteries. They will be completely dead. Lithium batteries lose capacity after 500 to 2000 cycles. After five years of daily charging and discharging, a lithium battery loses 30 to 40% of its original capacity. Your gravity system is still 100% capacity after 10 years. Still 100%. So even though gravity systems have lower round trip efficiency than lithium initially, over the lifetime of ownership, they become more efficient because they never degrade. Energy stored depends on two things, the mass of the weight and the height you lift it. Double the height and you double the energy, triple the weight and you triple the energy. It is best used for backup power during blackouts. So that's it friends, hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and share this amazing idea with your teachers and friends. Take care. Bye-bye.